So we are still in our quest for understanding action potential. And before we were going to keep going, we're going to use some of the images that Professor Pani put in his uh, presentation. So thank you, Professor Pani, the head of the biophysics division. And uh, he collected uh, some images from the internet we're going to use to help understand action potential. I'm going to put the final piece in the puzzle the stimulation threshold, and I'm, this is with respect to the little graph that we were working on for the action potential. And I'm also going to talk about characteristics of action potential and the strength duration curve. So let's get started. And we already recognize this because we already went through this graph. Initially, we have some sort of stimulation, and this stimulation uh, induces the opening of voltage-gated sodium channels. Don't worry about the voltage gated. We're going to get to that later when we're going to talk about uh, ion channels. So sodium channels open. Sodium comes in. We're gaining positive charges and we're going up. And at this point, the sodium channels are inactive and the potassium channels have their delayed peak opening and they're going to go out of the cell and depolarize it. We're going to gain our negative, uh, our negative membrane potential back and then it's slowly going to close and we're going to regain our membrane potential. So basically what's important to understand here is that if this is, if this is my, uh, my, this is my uh, axis here of membrane potential, let's say this is minus 70 right here, this is minus 50, and this is plus 50 here, we can see that there's a certain threshold. We can see that there's a certain threshold for intensity. And that means that if I'm going to get an intensity that doesn't reach, I'm just going to contrast here, that doesn't quite reach this, this intensity here. You can say intensity, but really is a bunch of things. Then I'm not going to have an action potential. If it's lower, I'm not going, it's just going to die off. But suddenly, if I reach a threshold, I get a response. What's important to understand with this is that I can't have a smaller action potential in this cell. It's not as if I have, okay, I have a a weaker stimulation, then I'm going to have a weaker action potential. No, this does not happen. Action potential will look the exact same way for every given cell, so it either happens or it doesn't. And that is why action potential is commonly referred to as an all or not response, because it can either happen or it is not going to happen, but it can't happen to a lesser extent. And at this point, we're going to take a look at another slide via uh, the presentation of Professor Pani. And here we see just a bunch of action potentials for the same cell. This is for the same, let's just say, nerve cell, because it's very generic. And we can see that they're all pretty much, they all look alike. But what does that mean? Well, if we look at, 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 if we look at these different action potential, you can say uh, curves, they have the same shape, the exact same shape. They have the exact same amplitude amplitude, and uh, they take the exact same time. They have the exact same duration. All of them have the exact same characteristics for every given specific cell. And if, if I take a look at it and I say, okay, so the shape is the same, and the amplitude, the amplitude is the same, and the duration here is the same. So how do I know if the stimulation is very strong or the stimulation is very weak? And what I mean by that, what I mean by that is how do I know if my stimulation is this strong or if my stimulation is this strong? This is a considerably stronger stimulation. And I know that in everyday life, when I feel wind against my skin, it doesn't feel the same as if I feel someone punching me. I can sense the difference in the, in the stimulation intensity. So how do I know? Because it all looks the same to me. And the key phrase is that the stimulation, stimulation is coded in the frequency. And what I mean by that really is let's just say, um, let's just say that I have, I, I'm just going to give the same example. I'm walking outside and this, I'm walking outside and suddenly, and this is my, my skin cell, my my uh, rather the nerve cells in my skin tissue and suddenly I feel a breeze so I'm going to get an action potential giving me a sensation of a breeze and that's what it's going to look like and basically if I take a look at it in a bigger scale what I'll see is just this 
a little bit of up, maybe one more here. And these will have these will have the same amplitude, the same duration, the same size. But what happens if if I feel a sharp pain if someone's punching me? It'll look like this. Or something close to this. And this is what we mean by the intensity of the stimulation is coded in the frequency. The more they're closer together, the more stimulation is intense. And the further they are apart, the further they are apart, the more the stimulation is what we can say to a greater extent, the less intense it is. So if we know if we know these things, that they may ask about any of these, these are just basic ideas. Just think of it as this curve is going to look the same for every cell. The entire difference is how different or how far away is it going to be from its next from its next curve. And the closer it is, the more intense the stimulation. And if we're talking about the stimulation, we really need we really need to incorporate the idea of the intensity for the duration. And what do I mean? What do I mean? All I said so far is that there's some sort of threshold. Threshold uh, for stimulation. That's what I said. Right? But apparently, well, well it, it seems, and it, and it also is in the sense that if I have a very, 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 very intense, intense stimulation, I don't, ha I don't need such a long time to apply it to get an action potential. And if I have a very, let's say, a very, um, a very, I would say, a very weak, a very weak stimulation, in that case, I may need some more time to apply it to get an action potential. And let's take a look at this. You can think of anything to the right and above of this green line to be an action potential. Anything on this side. Anything on this side is an action potential. Anything here is no action potential. Let me write this down. Here we have action potential, and here we have no action potential. And you're going to see this in, in, in a couple of seconds. You're going you're gonna to pretty much understand what I'm talking about. And let's just say I apply this, this type of duration. This is a very, this is a very uh, so, uh, short duration. It doesn't matter what intensity I apply it in. It doesn't matter how strong my intensity is. I'm not really going to get an action potential because I'm only going to be in this side of the curve. I'm not going to get an action potential. So I can see that even if, let, even if I have, let's just say I have a very high intensity. I have a very high intensity here. I really need, let's just say, this much, this much, or even less than that, this much uh, uh, duration to get an action potential at this point. But if I have a lower, if I have a lower intensity of stimulation, I'm going to need slightly, I'm going to need slightly more duration. And this is what I really need. But what's what's really important to understand, other than the fact that the more intensity I have, the less duration I need potentially to get an action potential, are two terms that are quite important to understand. And first of all, the first, the first of those two is basically the line, this line here, this line here, that is very, very close to this green borderline, but it doesn't touch it. This is this line here. And this line here is called the Ryobase. Ryobase. And the Ryobase is basically an intensity. And it's an intensity of stimulation that would never really give me an action potential. It's just on the border. It's on the infinite border. And if I zoom in on this point, if I zoom in, let me show you what I mean by that. If I have this line that goes like so, right, and it goes in infinitely, the Ryo base is basically going to be this, this line that never quite touches it. It gets really close to it, but it never touches it. And this is basically, this is basically the Ryo base or the definition of the Ryobase, and I'm just going to, to write it here because it's often confused. And I've, I've seen it defined in different ways, but the way I like to look at it is, first of all, Ryobase is an intensity, so it's the intensity, intensity, applied, applied for an infinite, infinite amount of time, 
amount of time to get an action potential. Obviously, it's not going to give me an action potential because it's never really going to going to crisscross with the green line. Uh, and that is why you need to apply it for an infinite amount of time. And I've heard people, people say, oh, no, you know what? Basically, the rival base is the intensity that would never give you an action potential. And in that case, the, the rival base could also be this line, because this line would also never give me an action potential. And this line, and the line under that. What we really need to take into account with the rival base is that there is a, a theoretical curve that would meet after an infinite amount amount of application. So the rival base is basically the line that is going to theoretically almost touch but never quite touch the, uh, this, this line of, uh, of the threshold intensity. And what we really use the rival base for, because it's kind of a really, it's kind of a really weird, odd way to define things, the rival base is an, is an intensity. And what we use it for is we use it to define a duration. And if I take if I take this rio base intensity and I double it, I double it. This is where I am. I double it. And then I take it to the point in the graph and I take it down and I get a certain duration. I get a certain duration. This duration is called the chronaxi. Chronaxi. Maybe there's an E here. I'm not sure. But the chronaxi is basically the time, it's a duration, whereas ryobase is an intensity. Chronaxi is the duration at which double the ryobase intensity needs to be applied to get an action potential. And let me repeat that. Let me repeat that. The chronaxi is a duration in which double, double the intensity of the ryobase, this is the intensity of the ryobase, double the intensity of the ryobase needs to be applied so this is the time, and this is the, uh, the double the intensity to get an action potential at this point. So let me just write this down. So the chronaxi, I'm going to switch colors arbitrarily again. So the chronaxi, you should check the spelling because I'm not really sure. Chronaxi is the time in which double, double the intensity of the ryobase needs to be applied, ryobase needs to be applied, needs to be applied to get an action potential. And it's pretty important to know these two concepts. It's pretty important to know because they represent the entirety of this graph. Basically, this graph lives and breathes these, these two uh, ideas. So basically, we've gone through what is the stimulation uh, threshold in the, uh, in the uh, curve of the action potential. And we went through the fact that all action potentials look like they have the same shape, amplitude, and duration. But the strength of the stimulation is really answering the question of how close together are they going to and are they going to be? Are they going to be really close together? The stimulation is very intense. Are they spread apart? through very long duration, then we can expect the intensity of the stimulation to be weaker. Hopefully you found this at least somewhat intuitive, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.